Good evening, Graham Rawlins with our Friday edition of News Geelong. GDP Industries, a Geelong not-for-profit organisation, is benefiting from the initiative of Secondhand Saturdays being conducted across Geelong and the regional area. While initiatives in saving water continue to be part of our community education, an innovative exhibition at the National Wool Museum has more. From the world of Geelong sport, Mitch Scoop Cleary has the latest sports news, while from the weather world we'll bring you the Geelong and Surf Coast area weather forecast expected over the next six days. Load up your car with unwanted goods for the Second Hand Saturday program that will also help provide employment for people with disabilities through GDP Industries, a not-for-profit organisation based in Geelong. Debbie Meany reports. Second Hand Saturday is a great initiative that's being run uh, in partnership with the City of Greater Geelong. I spoke with Gail Seddon from Barwon Regional Waste Management here at one of the recycling centres. Well, Second Hand Saturday is a trial for the City of Greater Geelong residents to bring in their pre-loved goods from their household uh, and so that that can be taken and um, reused or recycled. Uh, the idea came from New South Wales actually, it's been uh, trialled up there and it's been very successful. So we're going to do three trials here in Geelong just to see how it goes. Today you can take it all in to the Second Hand Saturday and that material is going to be either recycled um, and or sent off and um, reused by other people. Yeah. Oh, it's a great idea, not having the curbside collection like some other places do. Yeah. This is a really great alternative. Yeah, and we found that um, the elderly people really enjoyed it because basically what happens is all the material from your car load can be taken out on site, so there doesn't have to be any lifting by the residents. Basically, it's all done for you. It gets all sorted, so people were bringing in trailer loads of furniture, television sets, um, refrigerators, you know, white goods as I said, and then use clothing, toys, bric-a-brac from your household. Uh, and that all goes to um, the white goods, for instance, and the television sets go to GDP Industries, where they dismantle the materials and take out all the metals and recycle all the materials. So, and that money goes back to GDP Industries, which is a not-for-profit not organisation in Geelong. We've got two more dates yep. for this drop-off. Yep. Tell me where and when. OK, so we've got Drysdale and Lovely Banks. Uh, now, the date for Drysdale is the 16th and Lovely Banks is the 30th of June. Yep. Excellent. And the website where people can find out all that information and get an SMS reminder. Yep. So secondhandsat.com.au and uh, there's a SMS reminder so you can register for that. Uh, and there's also a hotline number that you can um, ring up if you want any more information. Well, it's a great trial. Sounds like you had a, a good start to it. So uh, I'm sure the residents were going to jump on that. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, Gail. Excellent. OK, rolling. So we've got two more dates left in the trial. Tell me where and when exactly these people can drop off stuff. OK, so we've got Drysdale on the 16th of June at the uh, Potato Shed and then Lovely Banks on the 30th of June at the City Works Operation uh, Depot at um, Anarchy Road. Excellent, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Yeah. At GDP Industries, this is Debbie Meany for News Geelong. Thank you, Debbie. A full list of acceptable items is available on www.secondhandsaturday.com.au or you can call 1300 687 281. Tagged as Bell's Campanology Change Ringing Geelong, the bells of St Paul's Anglican Church in La Trobe Terrace performed a Tower Bells concert with the Tower Bell Ringers in full flight, as Merrill Friend reports. Entire last weekend, local churches including St Mary's Basilica, Wesley Uniting, and Christchurch were hosting music and song. But St Paul's Anglican on the Trade Terrace was offering something a little bit different: the Tower Bell concert with local bell ringers. And we we're able to speak with the bell captain, David Hayes. I was actually were put in originally in uh, 1864, and um, they weren't rung for about a hundred years, and. Uh, they were restored in 1982, uh, they were sent back to England and restored and they came back here and were put back in the tower at that time. Now, where on earth do you go to learn how to ring a bell? 
Uh, Mary uh, learned to ring in Ballarat and I learned to ring in Melbourne at St Paul's Cathedral. Oh, beautiful. Now, Mary, you actually met each other doing this wonderful, do you call it a sport or what is it? A hobby, I think, <laughs> or an art, perhaps, would be more to the point. Yes, we met in St Paul's Cathedral. We were both young, keen ringers in those days, and we've become old, keen ringers over the years. Now, how far back does the history of bell ringing go, Mary? Oh, way back into the medieval times really is when the bell ringing started and it developed over the years into the 18th century perhaps when it became really really strong in England. Now it is a unique uh, activity for people to do but I'm sure there might be some potential bell ringers out there watching this today if they were interested in joining what could they do David? They could um, uh come here we practice each Monday night from uh, 6 30 to 8 o'clock and they'd be made most welcome anybody from ages 12 to 15 right through to uh, 50 60 year olds there's no problem there with age you've just got to get up those little stairs don't you Mary it's a problem but it keeps you fit and active now it isn't a huge space up here how many bell ringers can you fit in this area Oh, we've got eight bells here, but uh, we usually um, have about uh, 11 or 12 people that practice on the Monday night. The bell is sitting up in that position when we ring it, and so we pull on the rope, and the bell will turn a full circle one way, and then turn back the circle the other way. And if I pull on this rope here, you'll see this part, the woolly part here, um, will go up towards the top of the, uh, or what would be the, the ceiling here, and then come back down again. So I'll pull on this, and right. the bell has turned a full circle, and the woolly part is up there, and it pulls back down that way. And what was the size of the biggest bell in this tower, did you say? The biggest bell in this tower is 1300 weight, which is about the size of a small car. <laughs> so you wouldn't really want to go up that ladder and find out what's up there, would you? No, no, not really, not really. No. And put that in comparison, the largest bell at St Paul's Cathedral, Melbourne, is 2,900 weight, whereas the largest bell at St Paul's Cathedral, London, is 6,100 weight. So that's quite a few tonnes. Yes. But how far can it be heard? Um, uh, it depends on the uh, direction of the wind and things like that, so there are a number of factors involved. But, you know, um, people have said that they've heard the bells here over in Hearn Hill, so from time to time. From St Paul's Anglican, Merrill Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Merrill. As we go to a break on this Friday edition of News Geelong, don't forget you can Twitter us on our Twitter account. Yes, we're all twitching Geelong grubby, aren't we? At News Geelong 31 with your thoughts and comments. Grubby's a twit. We will return with more news after this. <laughs> <laughs> 